all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So what causes pole shifts? Our solar system is larger than you know. It is a binary star system. The Sun's twin, Nemesis, is a dark unlit star, which pulls the orbits of the outer planets into the ellipses you see today. Our solar system also contains a tenth planet, Planet X, which orbits both stars, our Sun, Sol, and its twin, Nemesis, approximately every 3,657 years. Planet X passes our Sun and crosses the Earth's orbit. The magnetic fields of our planet Earth clash with Planet X, causing great upheaval on Earth as it adjusts with the pole shift. This particular global nightmare would truly come from the heavens. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Does our sun have an evil twin? A star named Nemesis orbiting the distant reaches of our solar system? And every 26 million years, does it fling comets from the Oort cloud toward Earth? Sometimes they get tossed out, other times they orbit harmlessly until they evaporate and go away. Scientist Richard Muller not only theorizes that this periodic mayhem is caused by a deadly companion star to the Sun, he believes he knows precisely what kind of star it is. A red dwarf. An evil twin to the Sun named Nemesis. Some scientists suspect that Nemesis is a dark, still undiscovered star orbiting our sun. And every 26 million years, it triggers a disaster. We know that the solar system is surrounded by this enormous cloud of comets. And so these successive passages of the sun's companion would send comets into the inner solar system. Some of them would hit Earth. What follows is death on a colossal scale. It is now widely accepted that a rock from space caused the end of the age of dinosaurs 65 million years ago. So we now are pretty convinced that the reason that a huge fraction of life on the Earth went extinct 65 million years ago was because a comet slammed into the Earth. The resulting impacts have been the source of many major extinction events in Earth's history. By definition, a red dwarf barely glows at all would be the closest star to our sun, and we wouldn't even know it. Now, why is that? The way we discover nearby stars is either because they're very bright, and a red dwarf star is not very bright, or because the sun is moving past it. This star is moving with us. Yes, it's orbiting us, but that orbit is very slow, 26 million years. So it would be moving with us. It would just be at a fixed position in the sky and wouldn't move. In other words, when viewed from Earth, most nearby objects are shifting over time. But Nemesis is sitting still. When binary stars are of different sizes, the smaller star, in this case Nemesis, swings in a wide orbit around its larger companion, in this case the Sun, 
which barely seems to orbit at all. Why does the smaller one move in a much wider circle? The answer has to do with a concept called the center of mass. Wow, are you guys balanced? But unlike these gymnasts, Nemesis and the Sun are not equal. Astronomer Richard Muller estimates that the Sun has 10 times more mass than its undiscovered twin. And when one binary star is larger than its sibling, the center of mass between them shifts closer to the larger star. Since Tammy weighs about four times as much as the metal weights, she must move far closer to the center of mass to maintain balance. If Tammy and the weights represented binary stars, the weights would orbit far out in the distance, while Tammy would barely move. In fact, both would be orbiting each other. It's kind of a misconception to think that the more massive star doesn't move and the less massive star just goes around it. In fact, they're still both orbiting the common center of mass. Although calculations indicate that Nemesis isn't due back for millions of years, something appears to be shaking up the comets in the Oort cloud right now. Could Nemesis already be upon us? If the sun was all by itself and there was no nemesis, then the comets in the Oort cloud would all have very predictable and regular orbits. They would be very regular in their arrival times and departure times. Without gravitational interference from anything other than the sun, Oort cloud comets, like juggled objects, could spread out evenly across the sky. However, that's not what some scientists report. When we look out into the sky and look at where the comets are coming from, their directions tend to concentrate in a certain region of the sky. And one possible explanation for that is that that skew is being directed by the gravitational perturbations from an unseen object that is out there. Based on these observations, scientists infer that a huge object is disturbing the Oort cloud. The solar system probably formed in a cluster of stars, and so close encounters with nearby stars, nearby rogue planets even, were much more common during the very earliest days of the solar system's formation. Most of these solar brothers and sisters have long since dispersed. But according to the Nemesis hypothesis, one of them is still out there, still circling the sun, still causing periodic chaos amongst the comets, and still waiting to rain death on the Earth once more. If that is correct, future generations will be faced with a monumental threat when Nemesis returns. A dark reddish star has entered the Oort cloud. Nemesis has returned. If humans still exist on Earth, they'll face a slow building but imminent cosmic threat. The Oort cloud contains perhaps 10 trillion comets, maybe even more. But remember, it's really big, so if you were in the Oort cloud, it's not like you would be pelted by comets all the time. The spaces between them would be pretty big. Like a bowling ball in a juggler's hands, Nemesis simply shuffles some comets out of its way. The Oort cloud has an empty region in the middle. It's been cleaned out by Jupiter and by the Sun. We live in that region. But as Nemesis approaches, the inner solar system becomes a shooting gallery. And so there start to be a few more comets than usual, and then suddenly they're just comets, comets coming all the time. And at the peak, there might be 1,000 to 10,000 comets per year in the sky. Will the impact spark another catastrophic extinction on Earth? Perhaps.
it would be difficult to predict exactly when the impact would happen, but there would be this phase, this sort of danger zone in which the chances for a catastrophic impact with something of a comet size would be much, much higher than they are now. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Comet Lovejoy plunges into the sun and survives. I looked up at the sky and saw this little orange ball about above the redwood trees. All of a sudden, these lights came down from that little orange ball. Couldn't tell you why it was. Scientists are still trying to figure that out, too. The California Academy of Sciences says it's possible it was a meteor. It's rather unusual in that this one appears to have a very broad tail following behind it. It was spotted in three states, Nevada, California, and Oregon. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But a mysterious fireball lit up the Melbourne sky late last night, sparking an awful lot of social media discussion. Here it is, right here. Well, joining us now is today, Melbourne reporter Justine McKenzie. It has been confirmed this morning that it was a meteor. Was a giant asteroid flying towards Earth. Detected by a Russian robotic telescope, it's one of the largest and most dangerous space rocks approaching our planet's orbit. This new asteroid is an entirely different story. It's 20 times bigger, the size of a village weighing millions of times more, it would for now called 2014 uh, UR116. But the danger from asteroids is very real, and astronomers are increasingly keeping an eye out and thinking about what to do if they confirm a collision. For last night, a meteor skipped along the Earth's atmosphere, lighting up the sky from New Jersey to Ohio. More than 190 reports have poured in to the American Meteor Society. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. Locals are calling it the lake of death as they scoop up an estimated 156 tons of dead freshwater popoche chub. Around 40 million of them popped to the surface last week, not to eat or to jump, but as dead fish. Boat after boat pulls into shore, all with the same sad, stinking cargo. At least 10 people have died and 30 others are still missing after heavy rainfall triggered landslides in southwest China. More than 300 millimetres of rainfall in less than 24 hours has caused flash floods and landslides in multiple towns. And the astonishingly heavy rainfall in the region, causing almost 5,000 houses to collapse, 1.9 million people who have been affected. A warning went out today in Hawaii. Flowing lava from the Kilauea volcano is now less than a mile from a community on the Big Island. A new vent opened up recently, sending lava toward the homes. The Kilauea spills lava in all directions, but instead of traveling down the slope and into the ocean in the past, the lava is moving to the east towards communities. Lava continues to creep closer to homes. Lava continues to emerge from Iceland's Badabung volcano. Scientists are concerned that if the eruption spreads to an ice cap, four kilometers away, the subsequent explosion could generate ash clouds. Hundreds of people have died and thousands more left homeless in severe flooding during monsoon rains in India and Pakistan. Large areas of Srinagar, the largest city in Indian-controlled Kashmir, are still submerged. Some places, the water submerged entire homes. One of the wettest days on record. More than 240 millimeters of rain happened in the last 24 hours. Your monthly average is about 98 millimeters for the entire month of September. So you had almost one and a half times what you would normally get the entire month in just a matter of hours. Well, another volcano in Iceland, this one with an unusual problem. 
The Hololan volcano is spewing something other than lava. It's spewing toxic gas. It's life-threatening near the eruption. And the smell, much like rotting food, is being detected as far away as Finland. Torrential rain in the Balkans has caused fresh flooding. Here in Croatia, around 2,000 people needed to be evacuated. Surging river waters rose at the rate of 10 centimeters an hour. Slovenia was also hit in eastern and south-central regions. Hurricane Odile brought fierce winds and rain as it battered Mexico's northwest coast Monday, proving challenging for those who ventured outside. Trees were uprooted in La Paz. Power lines came crashing down. It's deemed one of the worst storms to hit the luxury retreat of Las Cabos. Three people have been killed after heavy tropical rains caused widespread flooding in the Philippines. Tens of thousands of people in the capital Manila have been displaced. The Italian city of Florence has been hit by a violent hailstorm which destroyed terrace bars in a central square and injured five people when a primary school collapsed in an outlying village. Look at this, carrying cars away during a powerful storm in the coastal town of Jurisdiction on the Black Sea. Cars, buses, even semi-trucks, no match for the massive waves as the storm surge flooded the highway. Wow! This is tsunami style. Yeah, that is insane. The moment a sunny Saturday morning on Mount Ontake suddenly turned deadly. The huge cloud of ash spewing from the mountain caught on camera by a Japanese documentary. It was terrifying, this man says. The rock was falling like hailstones. And as frightening as this sign is, the biblical march toward apocalypse is about to get even worse. It's a disaster that conjures up images of hell itself. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. 